Flint has a cultural center? The Vehicle City. Not a single public high school left in this town. The downfall of Flint started way before the water crisis. Parking for residents only, eh? Well, the only resident left here is this cat. Flint, Michigan, one of the most troubled cities in the United States. Let's go check it out. We start things off right where we left it, as this will be my third video in my Flint series, and we'll be going through this area of the city that's outlined on the map. Well, do me a favor, as if you enjoy this video, make sure to check out my second channel, which is linked down below. My goal is to get to 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so if you could help me make that happen, I would definitely appreciate it. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below as well. Meanwhile, you can get used to seeing sites like this in not only this video, but in pretty much all of my other Flint videos within this series, as residents have continued to move away from Flint at a rapid rate. Well, the question is, is Flint, Michigan the worst city in the United States? You can certainly make a strong argument that Flint absolutely was the worst city to live in the U.S. over the 10-year stretch from 2010 to 2020, because during that time, crime in the city was at its worst as, according to official FBI crime data, Flint had the highest murder rate in the country for three straight years. And most importantly, we all know about the lead water situation. Not only was it unsafe to use the water, but the city and the state lied to the residents and told everyone that it was safe to use at first, when it wasn't. In fact, the lead water caused a breakout of Legionnaire's disease in Flint during the time of the water crisis, which resulted in way too many deaths. Going back to talking about crime, crime has actually gone down in Flint, and it's no longer considered to be the murder capital that it once was. At least, the year 2022 has been a good year for that matter. So we'll have to see how the future plays out though, because the violent crime rate in Flint today is still three times the national average rate. And even though crime has been down quite a bit from 10 years ago, that doesn't mean that Flint has solved their crime problem. If anything, it just shows you how bad things were at their peak. Anyway, here's the current crime rate for Flint based off of the most recent data, and you can see it's over 1,200 for every 100,000 residents. Not good. Currently, we're heading south on Martin Luther King Avenue, and this looks identical to most other major thoroughfares throughout Flint today. But yes, this is Flint's north side. This area in particular has experienced tons of abandonment, especially within the last decade. And when it comes to the most dangerous areas in Flint, or where most of the crime happens, Flint's north side has long been considered as the worst area of the city. And keep in mind that we're only going to check things out in this video as far north as Stewart Avenue, but Flint's north side is a lot larger than this small section, as the areas of Flint that are north of Stewart Avenue are considered to be just as bad, so We'll see the areas north of Stewart Avenue in my next Flint video. Well, let's talk about the history of how Flint got to be the way that it is today. There are so many factors. Well, during the last decade, Flint has experienced its worst population decline as of yet, percentage-wise, that is. And it's safe to assume that that was mostly due to all of the lead water that was going into all of the schools, homes, and businesses during the water crisis. Because during this time frame, Flint lost 20,000 people from 2010 to 2020. Good for 20.7% of the population, meaning that one out of every five that lived in Flint in 2010 had left the city by 2020.
And that's what everybody thinks of when they think of Flint these days. They think of the water crisis and they think of the lead water, but Flint has had a rough go of it for a long time, as high crime rates have controlled the city for many years, as I've talked about earlier in this video, with the worst years of crime being throughout the 90s, the 2000s, and 2010s. Not to mention the economic depression, with the loss of thousands of manufacturing jobs. With all of these factors hitting Flint hard for half a century, Flint has lost a double-digit percentage of its population during every census count since 1980. And I think it goes without saying that this street used to be full of houses. Today, not so much. Here's a Google satellite view of this area in 1999, and now the most recent. Well, back to the topic, let's look again at the numbers here. It's 1970 and Flint has 193,000 people, only a small percentage decline from 1960. Well, let's fast forward to 1980 and at this point, Flint has lost 34,000 people in that 10 year time span. Now your initial thought might be that that's the loss of manufacturing jobs, but GM didn't have their first rounds of mass layoffs in the area until the very late 70s, as it was from around 1978 to 1982 when those first waves came through. So with that not being a factor until the late 70s, it's safe to assume that the initial population decline was mostly due to white flight to the suburban areas. And that thinking is backed up by looking at the population graph for Genesee County because the county still saw a population growth of 1.4% during that same time frame. That is if you want to call that growth, as the county was seeing double digit percentages of growth during most of the prior decades of its existence, as 1980 was when the county's population peaked. But yes, there's more to the initial stages of Flint's decline than just the auto industry. Although, the auto industry was the largest contributor by far and away, more so than it was for Detroit. Anyway, 1970 to 1980 was the official turning point for Flint, as the city transitioned from being one of the best cities in the country to what would eventually be one of the worst cities in the country, if not the worst. Well, here comes the evil 1980s as unemployment is skyrocketing throughout not only Flint, but in all of Genesee County. During this time, people had to move away because there were just not enough jobs to be found to support a population of 450,000. Today, Genesee County is down to 406,000, and that number is continuing to shrink. Flint's biggest mistake was that it relied solely on the auto industry, specifically the manufacturing jobs that it brought with it. GM's headquarters has always been in Detroit, so, there weren't ever any corporate jobs in the area. All of those were in downtown Detroit and in Oakland County, which is a wealthy area that sits between Detroit and Flint. Anyway, in Flint, yes, it was all manufacturing jobs, and the jobs were found through more than half a dozen facilities ranging from smaller engine plants scattered throughout the Flint area to gigantic industrial complexes such as Buick City and Chevy in the Hole. This is the abandoned Cook Elementary School, one of 13 abandoned schools that the city of Flint sold off in June of 2022, as they couldn't afford the demolition costs. More on that later. But yes, as the manufacturing jobs continued to be taken away throughout the 80s, the community continued to fall apart. From the 80s to the 90s, Flint lost 11% of its population, good for 20,000 residents. And in return, the county saw its first population loss in its existence, losing 4.4%, also good for 20,000 residents. You can always go watch my previous video in my Flint series, which would be video 2, and in that video I show you the massive Buick City plant and I talk more about why there were so many jobs in the auto industry that eventually left the area, but 
By this point in 1990, the city of Flint has lost most of its tax base and the community was suffering in multiple ways by seeing poorly maintained infrastructure, less police officers and firefighters, schools performing worse and worse, so on and so on. Basically, everything that the city was financially responsible for was being neglected. From 1990 to 2000, Flint lost another 11% of its population, good for a loss of 16,000. Genesee County, on the other hand, saw a slight population increase, but at this point, Flint was a major crime hotspot as drugs, murders, and gang activity ruled the city streets. Anyone that had the financial means to leave the city had already done so, and Flint became known as a poverty-stricken and crime-ridden city much like many of the other inner cities throughout this country, such as Detroit, Chicago, New York, and Philly. Even though those cities are much larger than Flint, you could say that things were just as bad in Flint as they were in those other cities. From 2000 to 2010, Flint lost 18% of its population, good for a loss of 22,000. Now things are starting to get interesting in the city, as a lot of things happened during this decade. In 2002, the city was assigned an emergency manager by the state. Let's talk about emergency managers, as in the state of Michigan, the state is authorized to assign such emergency managers over a unit of local government that is experiencing a financial emergency. Flint is one of the dozen or so cities in Michigan that has needed one over the years. Anyway, during 2002, Flint announced a $30 plus million budget deficit leading towards an emergency manager being assigned to Flint, that EM being a Flint local, Ed Kurtz. The city tried to fight it in courts, but that was a losing battle, and it ended up costing the city $245,000. During this time period, city employees saw large cuts to their salaries, other workers being laid off completely. Other things included funding for parks being reduced, and in some cases, cut off completely. Utility bills were raised and certain city departments were closed. By 2003, the budget was able to be reduced by 14 million, about half of the budget deficit from 2002. By 2004, the city was able to regain control. But does this sound like a well-run city to you? Flint during the early 2000s, before the water crisis? One that is incapable of managing its own budget, leading to city services being defunded and public schools being closed along with raised taxes and raised utility bills? I think not. Moving on to the next decade, from 2010 to 2020, the city lost its highest percentage of its population, as was a decline of 20.7%, good for a loss of 21,000 residents, and as most of you know, this was the time period of the water crisis. Now, we're not going to get too far into the water crisis in this video, as that will be talked about in my next Flint video, but continuing on with talking about emergency managers, Flint was assigned one yet again back in 2011, and understanding the role of these emergency managers is crucial into having a complete understanding of how the water crisis happened, as these emergency managers have a job to reduce the budgets for these Michigan cities that they're assigned to, and that means doing things on the cheap. Anyway, in 2011, a year before this incident, then-Governor Rick Snyder signed an updated version of Michigan's Emergency Manager Law, which gave these emergency managers more control and more power whenever they become in charge of these money-strapped cities. For now, I'm going to speed up the video so that we can see everything in a timely fashion. Anyway, maybe you're like me, and you're wondering why there's a pedestrian overpass over this road that has no traffic. Well, to the left is Max Brandon Park, and we're going to take a little bit of a half circle around the park, and the building that you see here is the Flint Development Center, a resource for families with young kids. So, that's a good thing to have in this area at least. And Max Brandon Park looks like a nice, sizable, woodsy area. Well anyway, back to the story, as in late 2011, Flint is assigned their emergency manager, and this time it was Mike Brown. Immediately about 100 city employees were laid off, and pay was completely eliminated for the city council and even for the mayor. Seems like Brown was really enjoying the ability to use such power to an extent. 
Anyway, police officers and firefighters were safe from the layoffs, as the city received a $6.9 million grant during this time. All in all, 30 orders were given out by Brown during a nine-month period, and taxes were raised even higher than before, and new fees such as a $66 streetlight assessment and a $143 trash collection fee was given to all of Flint's residents. To add further illustration on just how bad things were in Flint during this time, Flint was named as the most violent city in the U.S. from 2010 to 2012. Some people will say that Flint went from being the vehicle city, to being the murder city, to being the city with toxic water. From 2010 to 2012, Flint was also recognized as having more arsons per capita than any other city of its size or larger. Now, if you think that I've mentioned a lot of bad things that have gone on in Flint at this point, I haven't even yet mentioned some of the worst things, as during this second round of Flint being ruled by an emergency manager, most of the public schools in Flint that were able to survive the first round of emergency management were not able to stick around this time. Today, there are only eight elementary schools left within the Flint Community Schools, and that number is expected to drop even more within the coming months. The rest of the schools in the district are magnet schools, academies, and Montessori schools. As you've heard me say in my intro for my Flint videos, there's not a single traditional public high school left in the city. We're actually going to see one of the abandoned ones later that hasn't yet been demolished. Anyway, the only two schools left in the district that serves grades 9 through 12 includes the Southwestern Classical Academy, which is a magnet school, and the Accelerated Learning Academy. Well, after a nine-month period, Brown is forced to step down as Flint's emergency manager and Kurtz was called in to replace him. Kurtz is the same emergency manager that ran the city back in 2002. Once again, the city of Flint tries to fight it in court, but they are unsuccessful. Moving on now to January 2013, news came out that the city's public administrator, Barnett Jones, resigns after people found out that he was working a second job in Detroit that paid him a six-figure salary. I mean, there's no way that he can do that and bring the amount of energy required to being the public safety administrator in Flint. So that was a low blow to the city and the residents. During this year, Flint continues to be recognized as the most violent city in the U.S., according to FBI stats, making that four years in a row. One month later, February 2013, Flint police officers filed a lawsuit against the city over forced concessions, as they were upset over a 5% wage cut reduced retirement benefits along with working longer hours. So, as we can see, Flint was off to a great start in the year 2013. Nope. One month later, the Flint Police Officers Association President Kevin Smith lost his job, and this move was done after Smith voiced some concerns that he had with the department. Smith then took Flint to court, and this time, the city of Flint lost. Alright, so as the year went on, the role of emergency manager was shuffling throughout the rest of the year. In June of 2013, Kurtz resigned, only to see Mike Brown regain control of the city. Later in September, Brown resigned. This time, the manager is Darnell Early. Early had prior experience being the emergency manager in Saginaw for a seven-year period, along with a former stint of being Flint's city administrator and through serving as a temporary mayor for the city in prior years. Early was the one in charge when the decision was made to switch the city's drinking water source from Lake Huron to the Flint River, which was only supposed to be a short-term fix and it was supposed to be another cost-saving decision, but it ended up being a very stupid decision, as we all know, as no thought was put into, oh, I don't know, a 
testing the quality of the water from its new source before making the switch, and doing the proper and necessary research that would be required from such a move to know how to properly treat the new water to make it safe to use? Once again, we can talk about the water crisis in depth in my next Flint video. This street corner at Welch and Chevrolet? Man, this looks miserable. Well anyway, Early resigned as being Flint's emergency manager in January of 2015, and this time it was handed over to Gerald Ambrose. Ambrose held the position for only four months, but during his tenure he rejected a city council vote to make the switch of the drinking water source to go back to Detroit's water source from Lake Huron. Ambrose said that the move was incomprehensible, and as a result, Ambrose was also charged for his role in the Flint water crisis along with Early, as they both faced many of the same charges, and we can talk about that in my next video. Well, Ambrose resigned in April of 2015, and at this point, all of the financial decisions for the city were to be approved by the Flint Receivership Transition Advisory Board, or the RTAB which had the power to overrule decisions made by the mayor and the city council if they were not financially responsible decisions. Keep in mind that these emergency managers are appointed by the state, they're not voted for by Flint residents. So it's like the state is giving a city a mayor that the city didn't vote for. Well, anyway, with all of this chaos taking place among the city management and the state, and with all of the jobs lost, remember 73,000 less GM jobs in the area today when compared to the 1960s, and with over 100,000 people leaving the city proper, Flint has seen extreme levels of abandonment, and today, the city is more abandoned than ever. Crime isn't near as bad as it used to be, but it's still three times the national average rate, However, today's Flint is more so about unemployment, economic depression, high poverty rates, no schools, few grocery stores, and how most of the properties in the city are abandoned and empty, and of course, still recovering from the lead water crisis. Speaking of having no schools, this is the abandoned Flint Northern High School. Now I've seen quite a few abandoned schools since putting together this YouTube channel, and this might be the largest abandoned school that I've seen yet. Flint Northern was closed in 2013, and it quickly reopened as Flint Northern Academy. However, it closed for good in 2014, and it's been sitting here rotting away ever since. And you can see what the parking lot looks like today. Falling apart, a bunch of trash laying around, some big objects too. 40 years ago, this parking lot would have been full of mostly GM cars, but today, not so much. The athletic teams for Flint Northern went by the Vikings, and among the most well-known alumni includes actor and boxer Tony Burton, who had played Tony Evers in the Rocky movies, former track and field athlete Mike Miller, and former NFL running back Thomas Rawls.
Oh, what is this? Looks like some assigned parking. Reserved for the assistant principal, eh? You don't say. Can't make out what the other one says, but... Nonetheless, some interesting relics left behind, for sure. Meanwhile, trying to get out of here, you come across this minefield of potholes and trash. And before we head out of here, we have another relic at the southern entrance to the high school. Flint Northern High School, home of the Vikings. Who knows how much longer that sign will stay up. From here, I skip the footage ahead to where I come across yet another abandoned school. And if you wish to see the lost footage from this video, make sure to subscribe to my second channel or my archive channel that is linked down below, as I will have it and any other lost footage from this Flint series uploaded on there once the Flint series is complete. Now, not only is there an abandoned school, but on the other side of the street, there's even more abandoned homes to go along with it. It just shows you how far Flint has fallen from its glory days. Well, this is the old Civic Park Elementary School. The building was completed in 1922 and it closed in 2009. Civic Park Elementary was actually built by General Motors during World War I. During that time, Flint was a booming city. As people were flocking into town from all over, there were thousands of job openings at the auto plants. In fact, Flint couldn't keep up with the housing demand those days. But yeah, quite the different story a hundred years later, right? And this is what it looks like on the other side of the street from the school. Well, it's difficult to see a city like this in America, but the problem is that there are more and more cities that are starting to look like Flint. And by the way, Flint isn't the only city in this country that has had an issue with lead water. Try Newark, New Jersey, or more recently, Jackson, Mississippi. Basically, if a city was being developed early on, let's say, you know, any older urban core east of the Mississippi River that was founded in the 1800s and was being developed through the early 1900s, Pretty much all of these cities have lead water lines. I hope all of you guys know that. But anyway, we didn't know that lead was a toxic metal back in those days. People thought of lead as being a reliable and affordable material to use, and it could be used in many different ways. It was very versatile. You could use it in paint, as most of you know. But yes, lead service lines. There are so many of them out there. You might not even realize how many are out there, and it might actually make you feel uncomfortable to learn how many lead service lines are still being used in the United States, specifically east of the Mississippi River in the Rust Belt region and in the far eastern states like New York City, Boston. It would really surprise some of you, I think. And obviously, Flint also isn't the only city in the country to have issues managing its finances. Try the city 50 miles southeast of here, Detroit. However, you can't deny that Flint has had one of the ugliest declines for a city in American history. And with people continuing to leave Flint at a rapid rate today, with the median household income being as low as $30,000 per year, not many cities are lower than that. And with the poverty rate as high as 37%, not many cities are higher than that. It's hard to name too many places that are doing worse than Flint. With that said, I do end the video here. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. 
Other videos like the one that you saw here can be found in my Flint playlist, my American Hoods playlist, or in my Michigan playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. We'll see you next time. Peace!